But the other aspect about um, my childhood was that, Scott, you have to be an achiever. You have to, you have to go after it. We, we don't care what you do with your life, but we want you to be the best at it. And so, uh, particularly my dad was so motivating and encouraging and, and challenging uh, at times. So I went on a path of, okay, the meaning of life is certainly doesn't have anything to do with God or religion, but I'm going to find out the meaning of life. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to become rich and famous because, man, money, fame, people know you when you walk into a restaurant. And I couldn't play football like our guests here uh, tonight can, but I could talk about it. So I said, I'm going to become the best sports broadcaster in the United States and nothing or no one is going to get in my way and that is what's going to bring me all my fulfillment my peace my happiness my joy my my self-worth and man did I go after it Paul I went after it I was possessed I went to the best school in the country Syracuse University has best broadcasting school in the country shout out to the orange okay uh I uh I, I was like, I'm going to be the best at everything. And in all my classes, I'm going to go. And then when I get into my first job, I'm going to be there for only a little bit of time. And I'm going to move up to the bigger market. And I was absolutely possessed with it. Living that lifestyle and making everything about me, I spiraled downwards, which is a whole separate story. But suffice it to say, I went down to the lowest point in my life when nothing seemed to make sense. Nothing seemed to, to bring me happiness or satisfaction. I had just an emptiness and I recognized and I recognized that it was due to my own self, my own actions and inactions, quite frankly. And when I went down to the lowest point in my life, praise God, Jesus came into my life in a very radical, powerful way. Amen. And praise God, he put a couple of really good, dear Christian brothers in my life. I didn't know anything about them at the time. But I reached out to them, and I, 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 I said, they were in my life for a different reason. One's a football coach, and one's a former NFL player. I said, you guys, God's doing, I think God, I need to talk to somebody about God. I didn't know where I was going or anything. And, and uh, I, I literally, I, I literally really thought that. I was like, send me to some clergyman. I ended up talking to a football coach and a football player, right? Uh, and, and they, they took me through, they took me through, they said, Scott, here's the basics. There is a God, and he makes everything. He made everything, and he's sovereign over the universe, and he loves you. But the problem is, we go our own way. We want to be our own God. And I said, yep, that's me. And, and that creates a problem. We call that sin. When you don't do what God prescribes for our lives, when you fail to do what he tells us to do in our lives. Uh, and I'm like, yep, I got it. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And he said, the other part is, you can't, you can't bridge the gap. You can't do it through your own actions, Scott. And I was like, well, I thought you'd just be a good person. And you, and you do it. No, no, Scripture doesn't teach that. that. That God had to love us so much that he would bridge the gap. And I was like, really? That's what this whole Jesus on the cross thing is all about? And they were like, yeah. And they said, it's a free gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't deserve it. It's a free gift if you'd like to accept it. And I was like, man. And I came to a point, Paul, where I said, all right. I'm talking to you out there, God, if you were real, if you're real the way that this book says you're real, and if you could really change lives, messed up lives where I've gone the wrong way, then I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you my life, and I'll try to the best of my ability to be obedient and to, and, to, and to follow in the way you go, but I have no idea what I'm doing right now. But it was my first step in trusting Jesus. And that was April 23rd, 1996. And my life has never been the same. Never been the same.